Okay. Hello, uh, Richard Venditti here again. Um, today we're going to have a lecture in our uh, advanced recycling course on uh, the repulping or the pulping of recovered paper. And what we're going to do is we're going to have a broad overview <coughs> of the different mechanisms that occur in pulping. We're going to look at uh, the uh, different types of pulpers and, and the advantages and disadvantages of each. Um, it's mostly an introduction level um, at this point, uh, get, getting you to know the technology. Okay, the first thing we're going to cover is the pulping of recovered paper, just a definition. Okay, and the definition is a device whose objective is to convert waste paper into a slurry of well separated fibers and other waste paper components. That's the definition. If you have something like that, it's considered a pulper. Okay. Now, the important thing about a pulper is it's the first step in our process. So the first step is probably the most critical step in paper recycling. Okay. Now, if we do not pulp properly, in other words, if we don't separate the fibers and separate the contaminants, none of our downstream operations are going to be effective. So that's a key, key, key thing to pulping. Um, the second thing is that if we incorrectly pulp, let's say we over pulp, a very bad thing can happen. We can actually destroy our fibers. We can actually cut the fibers, generate fines, and for that reason um, we're going to have um, an inferior pulp material for paper making. <coughs> Okay, now pulping, the main function is to disperse the recovered paper into separated fibers in the water. That's the main function. But if a pulper only does that, um, there's going to be some problems. We use the pulper for many different objectives. And I list them here on this slide. So the fir the, the, in many cases, what we try to do is for, um, if we're going to do de-inking or removal of adhesives or plastics from the surface of the fibers, we need to impart mechanical forces so that we can detach the contaminants from the fibers. If contaminants are left on the fibers or fibers are left on the contaminants, um, the removal of the contaminants is near impossible. The second objective that a pulper can do is mix um, the paper with water and chemicals. So in some pulpers we will bleach. Um, for instance, for newsprint you might add some peroxide to a pulper. Um, and so the pulper has a lot of shear action, good mixing. Okay, um, another objective of pulping is to maintain the contaminants as large as possible. Okay, the larger a contaminant is, like we talked about lecture in the lecture last time, um, the easier it is to remove because it has different size or properties relative to the fibers. Okay. The uh, fourth objective is to avoid damage to the fibers. As we said, we can really destroy the pulp quality if we over pulp the material and cut fibers to generate fines. The fifth item is um, removal of large debris from the system. Um, many pulpers are equipped with some type of de a large debris um, removal um, pr uh, equipment so that we don't plug up pipes and pumps and downstream operations. So that's removal of large debris is a very important part of pulping. Okay, when we talk about pulping, um, we can break it down um, into some categories so that um, it's easier to think about and understand all of the pulpers. Um, the first kind of comparison we can ma make is batch pulping versus continuous pulping. Um, in batch pulping, um, the feed recovered paper, the chemicals in the water are all charged at the beginning. The, um, the pulper uh, pulps the material and at the end of the pulping process the um, uh, product is removed. And this process is repeated um, time and time again throughout the day. Now the other way you can do pulping is continuous pulping. In this case the feed recovered paper, water and chemicals are continuously fed to the pulper. And the pulper is always um, in motion, agitating and pulping. And at the same time, there's always an outlet of the pulped material. Now, for a continuous pulper to work, 
um, you must be able to distinguish between the unpulped material in the pulper and the pulped material in the pulper. In other words, usually continuous pulpers have uh, some type of screen at the bottom. When a fiber has been um, liberated from the other fibers and contaminants, it will pass through those holes in the screen and, and leave. Unpulped material will remain in the pulper until um, the mechanical action or shear action um, breaks it down and it can go through the hole. So continuous pulpers have to be have some type of mechanism to only allow pulped material or, or mainly pulped material to leave the um, vessel. Okay, now another thing that we can talk about is um, pulping consistency and there's two categories, low and high consistency. Um, just as a reminder, consistency is defined and we're talking, when we talk about consistency, um, the, cons the solids weight of a sample divided by the solids weight plus the liquid weight. And the solids weight can include fiber and non-fibrous material like clay or coating. Um, and that's what we usually call percent K as it's expressed as a percent if we multiply by 100 percent. And low consistency is usually at 3 to 6 percent consistency. And high consistency can be 8 to 20 percent consistency actually. Now the important thing to think about um, in these two types of pulpers, or one of them is the processing difficulty with high consistency pulping. Um, low consistency pulping at, let's say, 5% consistency, the pulp can be poured um, out of a jar. So it's pourable. It's relatively easy to pump. Now, with high consistency pulping, the pulp is more like um, oatmeal or um, very, very thick material. Uh, you can just imagine. Um, if you took pulp and squeezed it with your hands uh, moderately, um, you could make a clump of pulp. It would have a lot of water in it. It might be around 15-20% uh, consistency. If you put it on the table, it would not um, flow. Now uh, that causes us some problems. So when we, are, when we agitate this material, uh, that's okay. Um, when the impeller is keeping everything in motion, that's fine. But when we want, need to finally pump it out of our system, um, we do have some issues that we have to deal with and we'll talk about those in a little while. Now I'm just going to briefly go over the general parts of a pulper. Um, this is a generic pulper uh, and let's just kind of talk about some of the things that we definitely need to have in order for a pulper to work. Um, the first thing is um, number one we need to have a feed method uh, for our recovered paper so usually it's a conveyor it's an inclined conveyor and it's fed by um, it usually has some kind of, um, at the feed, at the inlet entrance is, um, is uh, at a warehouse and uh, um, operators will um, break open bales and push the bales onto this conveyor or they'll put actual um, bales onto the conveyor and there'll be wire cutting processes to cut the wires. So the conveyor conveys the um, recovered paper into the pulper. Um, Second thing we notice here is all pulpers are usually some kind of container like a tub. Um, actually there is a case, a, a continuous drum pulper isn't really a tub, but for most pulpers we've got some tub, which is just a walls. It's got to um, be um, mechanically strong to hold the hydraulic and mechanical forces that occur in the tub. Uh, third thing we have is the rotor. The rotor actually imparts the mechanical energy to the pulp and that's what um, starts off the process of defiberizing. Um, typically it's a rotating disc with teeth um, for low consistency and uh, a helical spiral um, for high consistency pulpers and we'll look at those later. And then fourth, um, we need to have in some most cases, in almost all cases, baffles. Baffles um, are going to resist the swirling which is inefficient um, motion for pulping and it's going to redirect the pulp into uh, towards the rotor. The fifth thing that we'll see is the um, dilution water um, feed. So we've got to have a way to get our dilution water into our pulper and also we need to um, have a place to add chemicals not shown on here. Um, the sixth item is the pulper exit and the pulper exit looks pretty simple but actually pulper exits can be pretty complicated. As I said before, in many cases um, we need to um, have some kind of barrier screen here so that unpulped material remains in the pulper and pulped material can proceed on in the process. 
Okay. Now, the next thing I want to just talk to you about is just general forces that um, occur in the pulper. And these different forces have different effects on the paper and fibers. So it's important that we kind of go over the uh, different forces. Uh, mechanical forces are the first force that you'll come across. And these are caused when that fast moving rotor, that spinning rotor, actually impacts the paper that we're trying to um, break up. And um, those mechanical forces will defiberize. So, um, and obviously, faster rotor speeds um, cause more intense mechanical forces in the pulper. And these can, depending on your conditions, um, if overdone, um, damage fibers. But um, very effective in low consistency pulping to defiberize. The second pulper force are hydraulic forces. And hydraulic forces actually are, occur because of the motion of the rotor. The motion of the rotor actually moves the fluid. And then the fluid moving um, causes mechanical, um, causes hydraulic actions or um, viscous actions on the um, paper to be repulped. Um, for instance, if we take a look here at this pulper, we're looking at the top view here. And this right here is the rotor. It's moving in this direction. And we have some baffles to um, redirect some of the flow. Um, for example, if we look at point A right here, what we'll notice is that the rotor is moving fluid in the counterclockwise direction on the bottom part of A. And the baffle, actually, this baffle right here is redirecting some flow. In the, um, it's going to turn and go in the clockwise direction. So you see you have fluid going in this direction and fluid going in the opposite direction. So at point A, we have this viscous um, effect where there's two flows opposing each other. And if there are unpulped material in there, those mechanical actions um, will, um, the mechanical, the opposing flows will um, um, use viscous forces to um, break up the fiber bundles or actually detach ink, which is a great thing. OK, the last force in a pulper is um, what's called attrition. And attrition is, um, has been used in um, typically in only in continuous, in, not in um, low consistency pulping. Um, attrition, what it is, is, is the mechanical shearing forces that occur between the rotor. For instance, here's my side view. Here's a rotor. It's moving this way. And the bottom of the pulper, OK? And that's typically an extraction plate with holes in it. So here's a side view. Here's the rotor moving in this direction. And here's the bottom of the pulper, which is stationary. Here's a top view, where the rotor is moving this way. And the bottom of the pulper, stationary with the holes in it, um, is, is right here. Now what happens is that um, big flocks of material, fiber bundles, um, get trapped between the rotor and the bottom of the pul pulper. And what happens is that causes an intense cutting action. And that can cut fiber bundles. It can cut contaminants. Um, but it's a pretty intense action. Overdoing attrition can really hurt fibers. Um, what happens is um, these fiber bundles are broken up. The fibers are broken up. And when they are um, of appropriate size to fit through those holes, they will go through the holes. And um, that is, um, so you can see that uh, for high consistency, what would happen would it be that a high consistency pulp would remain in between the rotor and the bottom of the pulp. And it would just get, it would plug the holes. And uh, you would, uh, couldn't, you'd have to cease operations. So attrition is something used in low consistency pulpering. It can be somewhat damaging to fibers. But it's a pretty intense action that breaks up fiber bundles and other contaminants. OK. So those are the three uh, main types of forces in a pulper. They um, included mechanical action, rotor right onto the paper fibers. It included um, hydraulic forces, liquid, liquid. And that liquid contain, can contain fibers and then nutrition. Now I'm just going to uh, generally go over some, uh, describe low consistency pulping and high consistency pulping for you. OK, low consistency pulping, as I said before, around 3 to 6%. The um, rotor is typically at the bottom of the pulper. It can actually be on the side of the pulper in some cases, but mostly in the bottom. And uh, <clears throat> it usually has a low profile with some teeth that are sticking up, and it's rotating at high speeds. Um, the rotating um, rotor causes a vortex, and that can cause spinning, which is inefficient use of our 
um, mechanical energy, and so baffles are typically in place in different places. Here we're showing some baffles down here low, and those baffles are to um, disturb the uh, spinning motion of the fluid. Um, low consistency pulping with the high mechanical forces due to the impacts of the rotor can damage fibers and break contaminants. So there is an issue with low consistency pulping of breaking fibers and what needs to um, occur typically low consistency pulping is used for um, tough fibers and I'll, I'll say this right now tough fibers being unbleached OCC. Okay, now we can compare that low consistency pulper to this type of pulper, which is a high consistency pulper. All right, the consistency here is generally 8 to 18 percent. And the first thing that you notice is that the um, rotor in the pulper is not low profile, it's a higher profile. It's a helical screw. And what occurs is that um, we need this um, high profile rotor because what happens is that rotor spins around and it actually grabs pulp from the top and brings it down to the bottom. And so we need this big um, rotor with a lot of motion, a lot of moving area to, to take the pulp from the top and bring it down to the bottom. If we look back at the pulper diagram, what occurs in the pulper is that the pulp here actually comes down to the rotor, it's pulled down and it actually moves in a circular pattern. And it makes, if you look, look at it from the um, top, it looks like a donut and that pulp will go and circulate this way. There will also be motion um, if you're looking down um, clockwise or counterclockwise, depending on your helicity. But um, there's going to be this downward um, circular motion, and it'll look like a donut here. Okay? So the high-profile rotor is very important. Um, the other thing that we'll talk about with high-consistency pulping is that um, at the high-consistency, um, there actually, the, um, there is a lot of fiber-fiber rubbing, okay? At low consistency, there's a lot of water. There's not a lot of fiber-fiber rubbing. But in high consistency, these fibers are in such a concentration that um, there's a lot of rubbing. And also, the viscosity of the fluid is much higher. So the increase in fiber concentration and the viscosity increase of the um, material, um, these will combine to increase the rubbing action and that rubbing action is a nice gentle action that can detach um, inks and toners and contaminants and it can also um, defiberize, so um, separate fiber bundles. So we've got a nicer, gentler rubbing action with high consistency. That's useful for fibers that are um, pretty sensitive, uh, weak fibers that uh, might be kind of wimpy and break if we had uh, mechanical actions, um, intense mechanical actions uh, applied to them. Okay, so in, uh, com to compare uh, low versus high consistency pulping, um, I've generated this table. Okay, so um, the first thing we'll notice is uh, this is low consistency and this is high consistency. Um, consistency is, again, f around 5% for low, around 15% for high. The rotor divided by the tank volume, first thing we'll notice, for low consistency, it's about 0.1%. So that means that 0.1% um, of the tank volume is occupied by the rotor, a very small amount. For the high consistency pulper, because the material will not flow by itself, um, and because the material is so viscous, we need to have a much larger rotor that can grab um, pulp from the different areas of the pulper and agitate it. So what you notice is that the um, high consistency pulper has 8% of its volume taken up by the rotor. Now, the specific power, that's the power to run the um, pulper, is uh, 6 kilowatts for low consistency, and it's 22 kilowatts for high consistency. It's much higher because the higher pulper has to do more work um, to uh, move the higher viscosity material, and to agitate the higher viscosity material. Now, you might say, oh, well, that's not very good. Um, it seems like the high consistency pulper is of lower energy efficiency. However, if you look at the um, specific power consumption, I'll skip down to the bottom here. Now, the specific power consumption is actually the kilowatt hours. So, oh, actually, the specific power was, it was power. It wasn't work, excuse me. Um, the specific power consumption is going to be 
Uh, now we've got units of kilowatts hours, so it's work or energy consumed per ton of paper. Now, if you notice here, low consistency, it's 30 to 45 um, kilowatt hours per ton. And for high consistency, it's 15 to 25 kilowatt hours per ton. So what's going on there? What's happening is, even though it takes more power to run the high consistency pulper, you have much, much more fiber in the pulper at, at one given time. So if you divide things by the tons of paper that you're pulping, it actually turns out that it takes less energy or work um, for the high consistency pulper to pulp a ton of pulp uh, of recovered paper than it does the low consistency. So that's an important point, that actually the high consistency pulpers um, on a per ton recovered paper pulp basis um, are more energy efficient. The uh, rotor speed also we'll just m I'll mention 16 to 21 um, meters per second, so that must be a tip speed of the rotor, um, versus 8 to 15 for the high consistency pulper. So what that says is that the rotor in the high consistency pulper is moving a little bit slower. And it can move a little bit slower because the high consistency pulper is depending on the, f on the rotor tip um, impacting the f rotor tip impacting the fibers and um, the paper and breaking it up. So the ro rotor tip has to move very fast. So it's got to hit that rotor tip has to hit that fiber really the um, paper really fast to break it. In comparison, the low consistency, the high consistency pulper is actually it's just gently moving that pulp around. And actually, where the rubbing and the breaking is occurring is when the fi when the um, pulp is rubbing against each other. So it can go more slow. Okay. So this just kind of reviews what I said. Rotor speed is slower for high consistency pulper, causing less damage to fibers via mechanical forces of the rotor. That's important if we have wimpy fibers that are going to break in a pulper. Um, attrition forces are not used for high consistency pulping. Obviously, that high consistency pulper would, um, those holes in the screen would plug. Um, and so for high consistency pulping, um, without the attrition forces, there's less fiber cutting and contaminant breakage. Okay, so the results of those two things are that um, when you can pulp with high consistency pulping, um, you should get higher tensile strength, burst and tear strength, um, than if you pulped from low consistency. So it just shows you that high consistency pulping will um, cause less damage, give you better properties of your pulp afterwards. Um, Okay, now the other thing that high consistency pulping does is because there's more fiber to fiber rubbing, that action actually um, detaches contaminants very well. So the detachment of ink from fibers is especially important um, when we're going to go do de-inking. So high consistency pulping is, is often used um, prior to de-inking. Okay, so just kind of as a review, printing and writing grades um, that consist of high content of fully bleached hardwood and softwood fibers that are wimpy. They're susceptible to damage. Um, we're going to use gentle high consistency pulping to pr um, is preferred. Okay? Those printing and writing grades are usually going into ink removal operations. And again, high consistency pulping with lots of fiber fiber rubbing is preferred. Now, in contrast, OCC recycling. Now you have, um, it's a historically older technology, and low consistency pulping is an um, older technology. Um, typically, it's done at low consistency, partly because of historic reasons. But another reason is that low consistency pulping is, um, is, a, is a rapid way of pulping, and the unbleached OCC fibers are less susceptible to damage. So they can um, still make um, quality pulp. Um, with the attrition and mechanical forces that up here. Okay. So that um, basically kind of is an overview of the differences between low consistency and high consistency pulping. Um, now I'm going to just kind of show you some uh, or talk to you about screening and junk removal in a pulper. Um, one of the sub-objectives that I mentioned was to remove large debris. Okay. This can um, be uh, wood. It can be wet strength paper that's unpulpable. It can be plastics, films, and large pieces. It can be bailing wire, nails and bolts, all these kinds of things. Um, 
container um, packing materials such as styrofoam, all these things can be in there. And uh, the removal of debris um, helps protect downstream equipment. You don't want glass and metals to scrape your centrifugal cleaners, for instance, that are probably made out of plastic. And um, it also prevents plugging of downstream equipment. Okay. Now, when we talk about debris removal methods, we have to go back to our categories because the debris removal methods depend on the type of pulper. Okay. So we have um, the high consistency batch pulping, and they, they typically have um, either uh, two methods, um, high consistency pulping with a dilution zone or high consistency pulping with a detrasher. And we'll talk about both of those. And low consistency pulping, um, typically uh, you can have um, a pulper that has a ragger and junk tower, and other continuous um, low consistency pulpers have a detrashing um, system. And we'll look at both of those also. Okay, first let's go to the high consistency batch pulper with a dilution zone. Okay, so here we have our pulper, and this has been hand drawn by me. Um, and I don't claim to be an artist, but that's our helical rotor right there. Um, and what we do is when we fill up this pulper, um, we're going to fill it up to this pulping level right here. Okay, so we'll fill it up with water and, and recovered paper, and we'll do our pulping. Okay, now at the end of the pulping process, um, we're going to add dilution water to the system. We'll add dilution water up to some dilution level here, and we're going to get the consistency down to 5 to 6 percent. Why do we do that? Because at that consistency, we can pulp, pump the pulp out of the um, pulper. Okay, so what happens at the end of the um, uh, pulping process? Well, Okay, first we dilute with water, so now we're at 5 to 6 percent consistency. Now in the bottom of the pulper we have an extraction plate. So it's a, it's a plate with holes in it. And um, at that lower consistency, the, uh, the um, pulped material and some of the small um, unpulped material will go out the exit port, and that exit port will be a little bit bigger. Um, this is not to scale. And then it would go um, through a valve, so we're opening this valve at the end of the pulper, and here's our accepted stock. Now this extraction plate with the holes is going to block the large debris. That will remain in the bottom of the pulper. And when we're done extracting all of the pulp that we can, and the level's gone down, now we're just left with large debris here. This valve will close. This valve right here will open, and the large rejects will be discharged out this valve here. So that's the way we can, that's one of the ways to um, remove debris in a high consistency batch pulper called with a dilution zone. Okay, the second way that we can do it is to use an external detrasher. Okay, so basically here um, the pulper is full when we're um, pulping at high consistency. So there's just one pulping fill line right here, and here's our helical um, rotor. And what will happen is um, will pulp, and at the end of the pulping process, we've got this material again at, let's say, 18 percent consistency. It won't flow. It will plug things up. So at the end of the pulping process, what we'll do is we'll add, open up this valve and we'll add dilution water to the bottom of the pulper. So we're not diluting all of this material, but we're just diluting the bottom material here. And what that will do, and we'll open up this valve, our exit valve. And so the dilution here will um, dilute the uh, material to about 5 to 6 percent. We'll dilute a little bit more. Um, well, actually, the combination of that dilution water and that dilution water will get us to about 5 percent consistency. And so we've got this 5 percent consistency pulp coming out the exit here. And we'll just continue to do that until we empty out the entire pulper. Now, at the same time, that pulp is going to an external detrashing unit. That's what this unit is right here. Um, this is not drawn to scale, so actually this detrasher is going to actually be much smaller. It probably is like a, a tenth or a twentieth, I'm not exactly sure, um, the volume of the, the um, pulper. So the pulper should be much larger, but I'm expanding this portion just so that we can see the parts of the external detrasher. The external detrasher is just a, um, it's a cylinder here. It's got a screening plate here at the end. 
and um, it's got a spinning rotor here. It's, it's a little mini pulper, actually. It's a li little, little mini continuous pulper. I, I never really actually thought of it that, like that myself. But when that pulp is coming in, some pulp is actually leaving through the screening plate. So the rotor actually agitates all the material. The pulp comes in at 5% consistency, goes through these openings in the screening plate, and it goes out the accept, accept outlet. The large debris, things like sneakers and um, plastic bags and mannequins and CDs, um, they won't be able to fit through these holes. They'll fall down to the bottom of the detrasher. Okay, and so when all of the pulp has been removed from the pulper and has gone through the detrasher, um, then what happens is that this valve is closed, um, water is filled up in here, and then this large debris is pushed out this valve, this reject outlet, which is opened so that um, we can um, clean this out. Then this valve is closed again. The pulping process starts. Um, the pulper is filled up again, pulped again, and then again we're going to repeat the cycle. Okay, those were the two types of high consistency um, debris removal uh, methods that we um, can talk about. And now I want to talk about continuous low consistency pulping. Um, this is a very common pulper that we see here. Um, it's going to have a ragger and a junk tower. So this is continuous. So um, what's not shown here is that there's usually a conveyor. It's usually dumping in continuously bales of, um, of uh, I'll call it liner board because this is very commonly used for liner board as an example. Now something interesting about this is that the bales that are coming into this pulper, um, they have the wires on them. The wires are re, um, remain on the um, bales. They, they're, they're cut, so the wires are cut, but they, we leave the wires right on the bales, so they're loose on the bales. And there's a special reason why we do that. The, um, the bales of weight of recovered paper come into the pulper. Water also comes into the pulper. We maintain it at a low consistency. We've got a low profile rotor down here. It's spinning and it's causing mechanical action to break up our recovered paper. Our accepts actually go through the bottom of the pulper. There's an extraction plate with holes, and the accepts come down here and are taken forward in the process. Now, the um, rejects can be removed either from the junker or from the ragger, and we'll talk about both of those. The ragger is actually, um, it's actually a very interesting thing. Um, it's a snake of plastics and wires that is pulled out of the um, pulper. So what happens is we usually dip a rope into the pulper, and what happens is the swirling wires and plastics wrap around that pulp, uh, around that rope. And this ragger has um, a pulley system, and that pulley, um, the wheel, pulley wheels pull this um, rope out of the pulper. And what happens is the, the rope, this snake, never ends. It's a never-ending snake. If we continually put in wires and um, plastics into this um, pulper, then this snake continues to grow. And if we match the growth of this snake with some velocity of um, removing the um, rope, then we get a nice, stable, continuous um, deragging process. So it's kind of a unique process, very interesting, and it works. It removes the wires and large plastics. Now, the other thing that can occur here is that the uh, heavy materials um, the large materials are actually thrown to the outside of the rotor. They're not pulped, and they go into um, heavy rejects fall down here into, um, a, uh, into a junker tower, and the light um, large debris is thrown this way and um, floats up here, and the light rejects um, are, in the are in the top of this tower. It's a water-filled tower. And this claw comes down and intermittently um, scoops out the light and the heavy rejects. And that's another way to get rid of some of the large debris in a continuous low consistency pulper. So, um, like I said before, these types of pulpers are often used um, for an OCC recycling process. And the next couple of slides that I have um, is just going to show you some actual photos of an OCC recycle mill in which um, we're showing you the um, operations around the pulper. Okay. This right here um, actually just is the warehouse where we um, store our recovered OCC bales. You can see that um, I might, um, if a person is standing up, I might come up to about this height right here. So I'm probably the height of one and a 
quarter bale. And so you can see that uh, this is probably, um, oh, I don't know, 30, 40 feet high stack of bales of OCC. It's a pretty dangerous place. These bales, um, if not stacked and stored properly, they can fall over. And there's always a, a huge flammability issue in a, in a um, warehouse like this. So we have a lot of um, OCC stored. If you think about it, um, OCC recycle mills are going to process about, you know, they can process in the order of 1,000 tons per day. So you need 1,000 tons of material per day um, stored just for your production. Okay, now those bales um, are taken um, by a um, front loader. Um, so an operator has to take those bales with a little forklift truck here, and we're showing them, pushing them on the, uh, on the um, storage floor, and um, they're going to probably pushed onto some type of pulp, um, onto a, a conveyor, a paper conveyor, not a pulp conveyor. Okay, now these are the bales that are, going, are on the conveyor. Um, they're going up the conveyor and into the pulper. Now the first step that occurs, at least in this mill, is that there's an automatic wire bale cutter. So you can see right um, here, this is a wire cutter. It's just a long, strong blade. It comes down intermittently every foot or so, and it chops, it cuts the wires. Um, it's kind of hard to see here, but there are wires strapped, um, strapping the bale tightly. So it's going to cut those wires, and then the um, wires and the bales are going to go up the conveyor into the pulper. And like I said, we intentionally leave the wires on because it helps the ragger operate. Okay, so here are the bales um, cut um, after cutting, going up the conveyor to the pulp, to the pulper. Okay, so here's our pulper. Um, this might be uh, 15 or 20 feet tall. Um, and it might be about 30, hmm, I'm just going to, I'm estimating here, 6, 12, could be about 25 feet high um, in diameter, 25, 30 feet in diameter. And here you see a bale and it's falling down into the pulper. The rotor is down here. Okay. Now here's the ragger. It actually is this thing right here. And you can see here's the swirling pulp from our pulper. And then the ragger is actually pulling this snake. And you can see that it's got wires and plastics and all kinds of um, stuff that we can't make into recycled paper. So this snake is actually being pulled out of the pulper in a continuous manner. Okay, And this shows you, again, that ragger. Here's the wheel, um, one of the wheels uh, actually right here. And these wheels are moving in such a manner at such to uh, move this um, this snake out at a certain velocity so that it gives it enough time for enough wire to wrap on so it's strong enough to be pulled out. A very efficient and clever way to remove contaminants from a pulper. Um, the same pulper has a junker claw and here's the junker claw. Um, it might be um, four to six feet wide, I'm estimating. And that junker claw again is going to go down, dip down into this tower which um, ha collects all the large debris thrown from this rotor, and the large debris um, is just taken out by the junker. Okay, um, so that is one very common way um, in an OCC mill to uh, remove uh, contaminants from a continuous uh, large debris from a continuous pulper. Now, uh, another way that a continuous pulper can work. Um, is the following. It has an, what's called an external uh, detrashing unit or process. And we've got to kind of uh, pay close attention to what's going on here. Um, what we have here is we've got um, our pulper. Um, our pulper is right here, and it's being fed continuously. And so that pulper is being fed continuously. Um, heavy rejects actually are falling down to the bottom of the pulper, and we've got two valves here. This valve is usually in the open position, and the large contaminants fall down, and this valve is closed. When you get a large enough, a large enough amount of contaminants here, that valve will close, that valve will open, and will intermittently dump heavy rejects. So that's one part of this pulper. The other part of the pulper is that um, uh, some of the pulp stock, or the stock, let's call it, um, actually flows over this weir, 
and then it comes down through this pipe right here and now what we have is basically um, a um, external detrasher somewhat like what we had for the um, external detrasher for the um, high consistency pulper so basically here we've got another we've got a rotor and the rotor um, is backed by a screen plate right here and the um, pulped material goes through that screen plate and it's exited out and I'm sorry but part of this has been cut off but here's the accepts of that of the um, here's the accepts of that um, screen and so here's the accepts of our pulping process okay now the unpulped material things like large flocks and material like that um, they're small enough to be pulped so what we do is we take those and um, we push that, they, they are pushed up to what's to this um, drum detrashing unit. Now, the drum de detrashing unit is a spinning um, cylinder. It's got these baffles here to direct the material down this way. And the, um, it's got a perforated cylinder. So, um, pulped, somewhat pulped material will go through the perforations in the cylinder. They'll go through this pipe and they'll be sent back to our pulper. Because if you think about it, that material um, was too big to go through these screens, the openings in these screens, but um, was small enough to go through these openings in this drum right here. So they'll go back into the pulper, they'll get um, pulped up a little bit more, and then maybe the next time they'll go through this screen. Now, what happens here is that the material that can't fit through those perforations um, continue down through the drum they are rejected out the end of the drum and these are our light rejects. So we get two streams, heavy rejects and light rejects are our rejects and we get our accepts out this part right here. So that's another um, common continuous um, low consistency pulping process. Now, um, as always we've got the exception to our rule. We've got those no nice classifications and now what we're going to do is we're going to throw in a different type of pulper. It's a drum pulper and it's a pretty unique um, kind of clever um, type of pulping process. It's actually a continuous high consistency pulping method. Now um, again um, I told you that we weren't really going to use continuous um, methods for high consistency pulping because we have to have some extraction plates and those will get plugged up if we have high consistency pulping. Now the way that this drum pulper works is that um, we're going to have a high consistency zone and a low consistency zone, and the low consistency zone will be where we do our screening. Okay. Now the drum pulper is basically it's very much like a lime kiln um, in looks. It's an incline rotating drum. It rotates at 11 to 17 RPMs as a general range. Um, the paper is put in one end, and um, the drum is very large. It's approximately 10 feet high and 100 feet long. Okay, now this schematic, and I wish it was a little bigger, but this schematic kind of shows what's going on. Um, this is the end view of the pulper, and what happens is the paper is put into the um, drum pulper, which rotates, and the pulper is moving this way. These baffles in the end of the um, drum pulper pick up the paper and the water, and pick it up and then drop it, and continue to pick up and drop, pick up and drop, pick up and drop, pick up and drop. And this is a nice... Um, gentle pulping action, picking up and dropping. It's actually so gentle that it's mainly drum pulpers are used for newsprint which is easy to pulp. Remember that newsprint or mechanical pulps have low strength and those low strength pulps actually can be broken up pretty easily. So we use drum pulping as a method to um, pulp up low strength types of paper. Now, okay, so we have two zones in this drum pulper. Um, the, we've got a high consistency zone and we've got a low consistency screening zone. So the paper comes in, the paper is lifted and dropped, lifted and dropped, lifted and dropped. That is the pulping process and that's at high consistency. Then we come to a screening zone. In the screening zone what we're going to do is we're going to add water to get down to a lower consistency and then this screening zone right here, that, um, this cylindrical um, part of the drum is going to have openings in which the pulp material can go through. So the pulp material will go through these openings and that will be our accept pulp. Coming out the end of the drum pulper will be all our rejects that were not pulped. And these will be um, 
and I say it, it's kind of, kind of sounds funny, but these reje this reject stream is a beautiful stream. There's, at, there's basically no fibers in there, and all the reject material, things like um, uh, uh, soda container um, cartons and things like that, plastic bottles, metals and plastics, they're usually very large and undamaged. So what's happened is we haven't broken down this debris into small pieces that could actually go with the pulp. We've left it as large. And so we get a very um, beautiful reject stream, as funny as it sounds. Okay, um, I've got some video to show you on this. Um, this is the um, beginning of the pul um, pulper, the drum pulper. And here are the um, teeth, the gears. And actually, um, there will be um, a motor that will uh, move the drum pulper with these gears. And you'll see this drum uh, rotate. So let me start that up. Okay, so here are those gears moving, and then here's the drum pulper, and you can see how it's, it's massive, um, and it's rotating, and that rotation is lifting the paper up, it's dropping, lifting it up, dropping, lifting it up, dropping, lifting it up, dropping, and this ends the high consistency zone of that drum pulper. Okay, and now this is the low consistency screening end of the drum pulper, and you can, it's very hard to see here, but that also is going to be rotating to um, serve the purpose of uh, screening. So let me just go back now. Now I have to go back. Okay. So here we are again. Just advance to the next slide. Okay, um, let me see how this works. So we're having a little AV difficulty, but that's okay. We'll get through this. So that's an overview of that pulper. Now, the next thing I want to show you for that pulper is the um, rejects outlet. It's really interesting. I, I, I made a kind of fool of myself saying that it's um, beautiful, but it is beautiful. Um, if we take a look here, one, two. Okay, let me just uh, come back. Um, can we stop the tape, Bill? Is that possible? You're rolling. Okay, um, we're back. Uh, I think um, this is going to give you a really good picture of why the um, drum pulper is kind of unique um, and uh, how I was saying how beautiful the rejects are. This is the end of that rotating screened area. You can see the baffles that are actually causing the material to not short circuit the entire screening process. And you can see the debris falling out the bottom of that spiraled um, screening operation. You notice that there's, there's really, you can't see any fibers. Um, it's a very, very efficient way to separate the reject debris from the um, pulped material. It's really, uh, I would consider it a beautiful method to uh, separate debris from recycling. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and get my laptop back up. Okay. And then the next slide here is just going to give you an overview with some cutouts. That One I more think time. Are. One more F8. Okay. Okay, this next picture is going to give us a nice cutout overview of the pulper. Um, the, pu the paper feed 
comes in right here. Um, it's dropped down. You can see here these yellow things are baffles that are picking and lifting the paper up and dropping, dropping, and dropping. Then we've got our low consistency zone. We've got our um, spray where our water is, where we're um, decreasing the consistency. Um, the good material comes out the bottom, out through the screen, and then the rejects is exited out this back and are thrown away. Um, we can talk about some of the advantages. Very gentle pulping, keeps the contaminants large and minimizes fiber degradation. Um, it's a simple operation that includes screening, so we get a lot of good screening out of this. Um, some disadvantages, it's high capital cost, it's got a very large footprint, and it's not an aggressive pulping method. So, for instance, if we had wet strength papers in OCC and we want to try to pulp them, this would not be a very good option for um, pulping that wet strength material. But you will see some drum pulpers. I've seen several in the United States um, with newsprint de-inking mills. And they seem to work well. And I've also heard reports of um, using them for mixed office waste um, somewhere in West Virginia. OK, now I want to just kind of summarize. Um, there are several methods to do pulping. We talked about low and high consistency, batch and continuous. Um, the, um, way of choosing which one. Sometimes you, you have no choice. It's uh, historical that pulper has been in your mill. Um, other cases, um, these pulpers have been placed in position in a process such that they're going to perform best with the fiber and contaminant that they're um, supposed to deal with. Um, the main objective of pulping is to defiberize. Everyone knows that. However, secondary objectives um, are very important also. We've got to remove large debris. We've got to detach contaminants if ne um, necessary, like in de-inking, or even in OCC, detaching tapes and, and um, plastics and adhesives. We do not want to destroy the fibers, obviously. And we want to mix, in some cases, we want to mix water, chemicals, and fibers. Final thought, and I mentioned it before, if pulping is not done properly, then subsequent processing steps will be ineffective and the product quality of the pulp will be unacceptable. So if we don't pulp properly, um, screening, cleaning, flotation, washing, none of those will work. And if we over pulp and break our fibers, then I don't care how clean the fibers are, um, those fibers will go on a machine, they'll make inferior strength or optical or surface properties um, or drainage or runnability on the paper machine and those will not um, be useful also. So we've got to be very careful. Our final thought is we've got to do pulping. It's the first step and it's the most critical step in our recycling. And um, that will end our, uh, that will end our um, lecture for today. Um, we did a broad overview of pulping and um, in the next le lecture we're going to talk a little bit, we're going to start to talk more about debris contaminants like these high-density cleaners that would be the next step in our process. Thank you.